Hey everyone. Hey, um, thanks for watching. And first of all, I want to apologize to you because I haven't had a video for about two weeks. My computer went kind of semi belly up. And so I had to dig into some emergency funds to get another one. And so hopefully I'll learn the new editing program and I can get this out as soon as possible. So, um, once again, though, thank you to the, our Patreons on patreon.com under Rob and Marvie. The links are below. But thanks, you guys, for uh, supporting us uh, since we've started. Uh, your contributions have really helped get that new computer for us so I can continue editing and getting videos out. But today, I want to talk about a very narrow topic, and that is just some in the... In the uh, the operative word is some of uh, emergency things that I suggest that people carry with them. Uh, and then again, it's very much personal preference. It's how much space that you have and how much money you have. Although I think you'll agree that being stuck and stranded and needing to pay for a tow truck or waiting for a day for someone to come by to dig you out uh, may not be the best solution for you. So uh, here are just some ideas that, that we use and uh, the first one I want to talk about is a hand spade or a small shovel. Um, I love it. I use it all the time. And people go, well, I've got a little hand spade for burying my poop or uh, I've got plastic bags for digging my, uh, pick up my dog poop. No, this is really for digging yourself out of the sand and the dirt if you are stuck. Now, some people have these um, plastic either, you know, they're about the width of a tire and they're maybe four feet long and you put them under your tire and they help uh, pull you out sometimes they're not always effective and for me that takes up a lot of space so I might get something like that in the near future but right now um, we have the hand spade the other thing that we have is a tow line now you could pick this up really cheap at Walmart for under 30 bucks and it is paid for itself uh, so much we have pulled quite a few people out I had a friend of ours uh, and she was stuck in her van and needed to get close to a paved road for the tow truck to give her a tow into town. Remember, and if you don't know this, most tow services will not go off a paved road. Unless you have a special service, they won't do that. So somehow, most of the time you get stuck in and get your wheels stuck is not on pavement. It's going to be in dirt. So you're going to want a resource for yourself. And this is really affordable. And for some of you folks that may have an RV or a box truck, something larger, uh, you can go to truck stops and most of them have these, but they have a much thicker and heavier duty for 18 wheelers. So um, uh, be sure to carry something like this. I think you'll really um, be grateful when you have it. They are very useful for pulling vehicles out. Okay, the next thing, I, oh, um, yeah, self-defense, maybe. Uh, I don't, I've never in over 50 years, uh, even camping and, and, and van life or whatever, I have never used one of these to actually chop down a tree or chop giant pieces of wood into pieces. It's a lot of energy and I'm just, I don't need to do it. Um, all of the firewood I've ever done is usually no bigger than this, or if it is, it's already fallen, or I can break it apart, pick it off the ground. And uh, we've never uh, used this. I've been able to use my hands or my feet to break everything we need. Uh, so Marvy likes this for self-defense. I like it because it's actually, I carry it because it's a historical document. I mean, it's a historical artifact, really. This, you heard of George Washington chopping down the cherry tree? This is the original axe. This is the axe that he used, and so I love to keep it. I mean, it's really valuable. I, I did replace a handle about two years ago, and um, last year I replaced a blade, but I keep it around. Okay, so next would be simply an extension cord. Uh, 
it sounds like a silly thing, but you don't have to have a really, really long one. But sometimes if you are out of power or you're at a campground or at someone's house and they say, oh, you can run power out to your car. If you've got an electric heater or let's say it's cloudy and rainy for three days and you have some kind of a chargeable device, it sure is really nice to have one of these. Also, um, recharging power tools or using power tools if you carry those. Now I carry a lot of tools with me, screwdrivers and wrenches and hammers and drills and blah, 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 blah. And you don't have to do that. That has nothing to do with this topic of safety on the road. Neither is medical. That would be a whole different thing on what medical things we carry. I may have to do a, uh, a video on that sometime okay so the next thing is let's say you come across a friend of yours and you're off-road and their battery is dead or your battery is dead this is everybody knows what these are uh they're not a torture device but they are you know uh jumper cables so i suggest if you're going to carry these get the heavy duty kind don't get the cheap ones these things last a long time if if you take care of them so that's being said, that's what I would suggest. The next thing would be um, if you have a flat. Now, if you have a flat on the highway, for me, I pay a lot of money for insurance and some of that is for roadside assistance. Yeah, hello, send the tow truck, I need you to change my tire. I'm probably not going to do it unless I'm pressed for time. Um, so, uh, especially since I have such a big truck and jacking this thing up is a headache. I'll let someone else do it. So I call roadside assistance. There's no shame in it. I suggest that you have roadside assistance. It's a great thing. But if you are off road, we were in Ehrenberg and uh, I needed to have my tire plug. So you get one of these and I think on Nomad Land, there's a in the movie, Fern is, is kind of l trying to use one of these. And basically you pull the screw out, you ream it out the hole with this. Uh, you put either like contact cement or rubber cement in there. Um, and then there's some uh, rubber uh, about the size of your finger that gets stuck in there and that will provide a temporary solution for you to inflate your tire and then go off the dirt road to a service station to get a new tire. Um, I would not drive too long on a plugged tire. Um, uh, I did, I did do that recently and I had a major blowout uh, just outside of Valley of Fire uh, outside of Lake Mead and in the middle of nowhere and I had I had my tire plugged uh, outside of Ehrenberg uh, a couple months ago and just never just thought it would hold and, and so um, it just blew up it just completely disintegrated and so I had the tow truck guy come out and uh, he changed my tire then I went into town and bought two new back tires and took the good tire uh, that was still on the on the back and put it up under as a spare but this is great if you are in an emergency and you cannot drop your spare for some reason or you don't want to you can pull your tire off plug it and then inflate it how do you inflate it well best thing to do is to use an, uh, some kind of a little compressor. This is a cheapy, cheap, cheap one, and it works great. It's got a uh, uh, cigarette lighter plug attachment, and you just plug it in. Now, the problem with this is it may not be long enough to go from the cigarette lighter to your furthest away tire. So you want to consider that. Okay, take that into consideration. Um, now, I would really encourage you, if you already do not have some kind of a lithium uh, battery that would have a cigarette lighter on it and, a, you know, um, inverter and all of that stuff, to buy one. You can buy one for maybe 200 or 300 bucks, a little 200 or 300 watt. I think Jackery makes some. I'll put a link down below. Um, you should have one of those with you. It's really great and convenient for something like this. Another thing is a tire gauge and that can work with this. Although remember, this will have a tire gauge on it. So this isn't really useful for me, but some people it is. Another nice thing about this is really important to think about is that if you are out in the middle of nowhere 
and you are stuck in the sand or the dirt, one of the most common tricks that people use is you lower your inflation, you drop your inflation down to 70% and maybe as low as 50%. And what that does is by lowering your tire pressure, you flatten out the tire, not flatten it, but you lower it enough to increase the surface area of your tires and its ability to grab uh, the sand and dirt better. And believe it or not, how effective that is. It's quite amazing. So you can lower your air pressure and pull your yourself out. Do not drive at 70 miles an hour when you're sitting at 50% um, on your inflation. Just pull over, pump it back up with one of these. Or if you don't have one of these, drive real carefully and slowly to a service station to reinflate your tires. Okay. So with that, that. Now I had mentioned the jumper cables. Now, if you remember, jumper cables are great when there's other cars around. But like the first night I owned the van, I drove out into the desert. I was by myself, had a wonderful night, woke up in the morning, had coffee, and I was ready to go. And it was and it started but i'm thinking my god what happened if my tire or my battery died yeah i had i had jumper cables but uh, no one to jump it with you know and so um what i ended up getting was a, a db power and what this is is basically a portable jumping unit and these things are powerful they are great and what they are is basically a very small jumper cable so you have to be able to get close to your batteries plug it in plug it in and hit the button and start it uh, your car and you're on your way pretty incredible things and they have them in different sizes depending on the size of your battery and the relationship between your engine and your battery so i would highly recommend one of these um of the things i would say definitely a shovel uh definitely um an inflator this this and of course this so it's not that much of an expense to have a little bit more peace of mind there's always going to be a situation where none of this works but um, I think that you're going to find that you'll be driving and camping feeling a little bit safer with these types of items I hope that helped I don't know if you have these already maybe you have something different you have a another idea that you use i mean the great thing about our community is so many people have some great ideas so so please share them so the other people who are reading these comments can learn from from us my main philosophy in life is nobody is as smart as all of us so i would appreciate uh any feedback that you guys have whether you use any of this stuff um trolls i just delete so try to keep your comments uh, you may disagree with me, but try to keep them civil. We're all in this together, guys, okay? So until next week, we'll see you guys down the road. Be sure to leave your comments and also like and share if you can. And uh, talk to you soon.